Hey YouTubers, Bart 49ers Corner coming at you with uh, not a bad mail, Dave. Nothing too crazy, but also got a massive disappointment from PSA in the mail yesterday. Um, I expected some disappointment with it, but I didn't expect it to be full-fledged punch to the gut, all that bullshit. But we'll get into it first uh, on some pickups. Got this one for real cheap. I don't know how, but I'm pretty happy because the pop in tens is pretty small. But I got a nine, 91 wild card, five stripe, Joe Montana. I really like this card too. Um, and these stripes are the kind of like the subsets. So they, have, they go all the way up to I think a thousand stripe, uh, five, ten, fifty, a hundred, and I think a thousand is what it goes to. So a bunch of those hard to find. And got that for a little cheap. So this one, interesting card here. For you set collectors out there, you'll understand my pain. The rest of you think I'm absolutely crazy, but who's got <laughs> who's paid sixty bucks for a checklist? This guy, uh, PSA eight from nineteen seventy three, but only a pop of six with none higher. Um, I've done a. It's these are hand cut. Um, yeah, these are hand cut, and uh, I submitted, did a self submission, and, and got a six on one, and uh, that hurts my my GPA for both seventy three as a whole, and uh, more importantly the seventies. Uh, so I had to go for the upgrade there, and I was excited. I didn't get outbid, so that was good. And then two simple Ronnie Lot pickups, ninety one Pinnacle, and ninety five Upper Deck. Um, Kind of weaned down some of the master sets I was working on and just doing basic, the basic uh, collector's issue sets that they have on some of those guys. And so those fit that category in for the cheap. And then uh, one real big pickup for me. Second most amount of money I've ever sent on, spent on a card. Last card I needed for my all-time 49ers set. Last Hall of Famer rookie card I needed for... Uh, of the 49ers, I still got some upgrades to go because uh, the guy, the one guy above me on the all time set has slightly crept up over the last year, and so I'm number two and gotta catch him with a couple of upgrades. But I will never have to upgrade this one. 55 Bowman, Bob St. Clair, Hall of Fame rookie. PSA 8, the pop is 20, and there's only three higher. And no 8.5s, all three are nines. So those would go for crazy. This guy wasn't cheap here. But um, in order to pay for that, um, I'm going to have some cards to sell. And here they are, because I was hoping some of them would be able to, to make it into my collection. But got a nice little return package from PSA uh, for cross grades. Sent six cards, all. Uh, what I consider very, very solid, and some of them big time cards. And I have gotten these cards um, over probably a six to seven year period, and uh, because I've had them all for probably the last three years myself. Uh, but I started picking them up in about 05 uh, off my first deployment uh, to Iraq, and you know, just kind of piecemealed it because you know, if you come off of deployments, you got a little extra cash in your pocket. So I was buying some bigger cards and stuff. Even though I didn't really know what I was doing as far as set building, all of that type of stuff, I you know wasn't informed on PSA registry existing or anything like that. So these are all BGSs that I was trying to get cross traded or BBGs. And again, I bought all these at separate times over the years. Uh, I think maybe two of them came from the same guy, but at separate times. And so, to think, to send six cards over for cross-grade, you know, I put min grades on them, because they're all 9.5s, I wanted the 10s, I didn't think that was outlandish to get a couple of them back as 10s, right? Not so much. 82 tops, Ronnie Lott, BGS 9.5, this is the second time I sent this one in, because this is the one I wanted the most. Evidence of Trim. Beautiful card with the gold label. I don't buy it. I got. It. I hold it up next to my other two eighty-two cards. I don't buy it. 
1980 tops, Walter Payton, BGS 9.5, evidence of trim. The size matches up, but I get these borders are thin on the 80, so it's tough to tell anyway. But I mean, it just everything's consistent about the card. You know, one edge isn't shorter than the other. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have a bunch of excess space floating there. You know, three 9.5s and a 9. This one's got two 9.5s, a 10 on centering. So that's why I thought this would get a PSA 10 for sure. No dice. So, for sale. We'll go up on the bay here soon. 1980 tops. Terry Bradshaw. BGS 9.5. Three 9.5s and a 9. Evidence of trim. PSA hates Beckett. This one is absolute garbage. Two 9.5s, a 10 and a 9. 84 Howie Long, BGS 9.5. The borders are huge. So what the hell got trimmed? What would you be trimming here? I mean, these aren't thin borders. Look, that is... You know, unless you're telling me that this card came out abnormally large when you pulled it from a pack and then you trimmed it. Makes no sense whatsoever. Just an absolute beautiful card. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, it looks like it came off the printer yesterday. All right, so those are the older ones. They hate Beckett's in the 80s. And I know that at times they might have been too easy. I'm not buying it, especially not with all four of those. But I sent two more modern cards in. You can't trim these. There's no way you could trim these. Well, of course, instead of getting an evidence of trim, I get didn't meet minimum grade. Are you kidding me? Three 9.5s and a 9. 1990 Action Pack Emmett Smith. Did not meet the min grade of a 10. I don't know what their problem is with this one. 91 Stadium Club. Brett Farr. 9.5. Three 9.5s and a 9. Didn't meet minimum grade. I can't see anything wrong with this this card. I have to look at some other. I haven't looked at some other 91s. The only thing that maybe they have an argument is the centering top to bottom, and it's hard to tell obviously because there's not really borders on this. But maybe this logo is too hot. I don't know. I'm just saying that that's the only possibility I can see. Just because there's you got nothing else on this card. I've had this. I've had this card for almost a decade. And I just... All separate cards. The odds of me going 0 for 6 on that. Just ridiculous. 17 bucks a card. Plus, I don't know if I messed up looking at the shipping matrix or something. I thought it was going to be 18 bucks for shipping. It cost me, charged me $29 to ship six cards back to me. 29 bucks. All for a loss. And that Ron, Ronnie Lock was a loss for the second time in a row. So, this is what I got to make myself feel better about the whole situation. So, these are growing up on the bay, I guess. Hopefully, they sell relatively fast, but I'm not selling them for too cheap because I, I, you know, I still think they're just awesome cards. But, you know, I'm trying to be smarter in my collecting, pare down certain things just to focus because, you know, there's just, if I'm going all after all that quality, which I try to do, you know. You can't collect PSA 10 everything. There's just too much there. We all know that. So um, you got to stay a little bit focused. So while these are great cards, they don't fit in the sets that I got going on the PSA registry. Um, and so I'm just trying to be smart there. But very, very disappointing. And uh, it's supposed to be a 10-day submission. Took 12 or 13, depending on how what their math is and and whatnot. So 17 bucks. You ought to at least get the days right, but it is what it is. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.